About six months ago or so, there was a benchmarking utility that was created for the BitX devices that would allow you to specify some frequency ranges. Uh, so basically, core clock and frequent or frequency and voltage ranges, and it would go through and it would try to apply those, benchmark them, find kind of the optimal efficiency hash rate. Well. Uh, recently, there's been kind of a revamp of that, and that has been done by MRV777 on GitHub. Uh, they've contributed to several Bitcoin mining projects, uh, like Public Pool, uh, a lot of Bitcoin solo mining efforts. And they've actually taken that original script, which was done in Python, and revamped it so that you can now specify minimum ranges and it will ripple through and it will benchmark your uh, BitX device. And so today we're going to be taking a look at that. And I've actually already generated a Docker image of that. I'm going to show you how you can use my Docker image to basically run and benchmark any BitX on your network and have it give you out a report. And that's pretty much all thanks to MRV777. So all props definitely go to them. If you hop on over to their GitHub, uh, they do have this BitX hash rate benchmark. And if we scroll down a little bit, now you can run this in native Python if you want uh, using a virtual environment. But for us, I've already made it easy for you to run in Docker. Uh, you can also, they supply the Docker file. If you want to build it and run it in your own Docker instance, uh, you can do that yourself or you can use my pre-compiled image. Uh, my image doesn't have any modifications. So as of around 5.30 p.m. Central Time on February 13th, that is the code that we're working with, the latest code. So scrolling down, if we take a look at the configuration, kind of give you an overview of, hey, these are the parameters that are set in place uh, out of the box. So it will run a maximum chip temp of 66 degrees, maximum VR of 86 degrees, uh, 1400 millivolts uh, at the high range, 1000 millivolt on the low range. And from a frequency standpoint, it will top out at 1.2 gigahertz. And power consumption will top out at 40 watts. And uh, the minimum allowed frequency is going to be your 400 megahertz. So it's going to try to go between 400 and 1.2 gigahertz. Now, uh, it is running benchmarks of 10 minutes at a time. So essentially what's going to happen is you're going to give it a minimum voltage minimum frequency that you want it to start at and it's going to try a bunch of different variations to find the optimal uh, essentially hash rate per joule that it can hash at and then it's going to give you a report of these are all the hash rates it can you know use and on top of that when it's done benchmarking it's going to auto apply the one that had the best hash rate so the highest hash rate. And you can see it's going to increment voltages of 20 millivolts and increment in uh, 25 megahertz on the frequency side of things. And it's going to give you an output. And here's some of the safety stuff it has. So it does have uh, temperature checks to cut off. So if your device starts heating up, it will actually stop the benchmarking. And it'll kind of determine, hey, this is the cutoff point and give you the report at that point in time. Uh, so it tries to keep everything very safe. Uh, you don't have to worry about, you know, your device getting fried from these tests. However, this is a open source utility. It doesn't come with any warranties, anything like that. And as always, you are using this at your own risk. So if you're curious about kind of how it runs internally, you'll specify that frequency and voltage. It'll test each combination for 20 minutes. It'll validate the hash rate is within 8% of the theoretical maximum. It'll incrementally adjust the frequency and the voltage, and it's going to stop at any type of thermal or stability limits. It's going to record and rank all successful configurations, and it's going to automatically apply the best performance stable settings. And so I've already actually ran this on my BitX. Uh, so I have a BitX Gamma. You can see over here that I actually applied it and it determined based on the setup that I have that the best frequency for me is 525, which is actually the default. 
and the best chord voltage is 1040. So this combination is actually getting me uh, around 1.2 terahash a sec at, uh, if we hop back on over the dashboard, at approximately 20 watts. So pretty, pretty good numbers there. Uh, now, what I did do before I started running it, I actually took a snapshot of, or a screen cap, of what I was running. And here you can see, I was running 525, but I had a core voltage of 1060. So by running this utility, it actually saved me 20 millivolts on the voltage, which obviously dropped down the power consumption and also would drop down the heat. Now, I do have the specific BitAx device that I have. I've noticed it does run a little bit warm. Uh, it is a Gecko Science version. And so for this reason, I think I what Prey wasn't able to achieve as great results as a lot of other people. But uh, today I wanna show you how you can actually run the benchmark yourself. So over here, I'm on just a home lab server that I run on my network. And uh, we're going to uh, run the benchmark again. So super simple to do. If you wanna do this, all you have to do, make sure you already have Docker installed. And then here I can zoom in a little bit on this. And we're going to do a docker run. New dash dash rm. And this is because this is a one time run image. And then the image name, you're going to want to do the retro mic slash bit axe benchmark. All one word. And then space. And here you're going to want to specify the IP address of your bit axe. Make sure it's accessible from the system you're running this on. Uh, so for me, it's 192.168.1.147. And then we're going to do dash V. This is going to be the minimum voltage we want to run. And I'm going to run the, I'm going to start with the bare minimum, which is going to be 1000 for me. And then dash F, we're going to specify the bare minimum frequency. I'm going to do 400. Now what's going to happen is this is going to start running a benchmark at uh, four, basically 400 megahertz, 1000 millivolts. And if we hop back on over here and we go to settings, you can see it's already flipped our frequency down to 400 and our 400 megahertz and our core voltage is at one millivolt or 1000 millivolt. And so now it is essentially benchmarking away and it's it's gonna hash to, you know, whatever pools you had set up, but over the span of an hour or so, it's gonna be rippling through, trying different frequencies and things like that. So you can see right now, we're seeing around one terahash at 14.6 watts. Uh, our temp is quite low, it dropped, dipped down to 49 degrees. And we're gonna let this run for a while, And but I actually have a report from the initial run I ran. So we're gonna pull this up. And what's, what you're gonna see is when you run this, you're gonna end up seeing um, kind of the current settings that's gonna determine, right? You, so you can see I was running 1060 at 525. And if we scroll down, it, you're gonna see it's gonna run through each benchmark. So it started at 1000 millivolt, 400 megahertz, and it's gonna take periodic snapshots of how it's performing. So you can see our average hash rate there was started at 876 and, you know, kind of settled in around uh, 750 down to 720 uh, giga hash. And then uh, it'll kind of tell you it expected to get 816. We actually got around 769, the average temp on both the uh, VR and also the chip itself and also our efficiency. So 18.99 joules per tera hash. And then it will basically apply and you can see, so that ran at 400 megahertz at 1,000 mil, 1, millivolts. And then it bumped it up. It kept the same voltage, but it bumped up the frequency by 25 megahertz. And then it basically started hashing away again. So we got a little bit higher hash rate. So we got 850, we ended up at 850 instead of 720. And it's gonna keep doing that. So it's gonna run through increments and so that's gonna, each of those rounds, you know, is gonna run for like 10 to 20 minutes. And then uh, once it gets up to a point here, you can see that it actually detected the hash rate was lower than what it expected. So it thought it was gonna get 
1.02 terahash, but I only got 941 gigahash. So it detected a little bit of a discrepancy there. And so it actually decreased the frequency down and it increased the voltage slightly to try to stabilize uh, that frequency. And then we achieved uh, what, it, what it thought, right? So we achieved uh, 1.05, uh, which was actually slightly better. And then it continued, continued on hashing away. And then what you're going to see is once we got to a certain point, it actually exceeded 66 degrees Celsius, which is kind of their deemed maximum temp for the chip. And so it stopped benchmarking at that point and it identified what was the best benchmark that I got up to that point. And it auto applied that. So for me, that was going to be 525 megahertz at 1.04 volts or 1,040 millivolts. So I went ahead and applied that, but then it gave us a report of the kind of the top five ranking. So what you're seeing up here, top five hi highest hash rate settings that it determined. And then down here is the top five most efficient hash rate settings. So if we take a look at the uh, the top five highest hash rate, we can see we got around uh, 1.1 terahash on this one, 1.06 here, 1.05. Uh, 0 0.975, 0 0.967. So those are going to be your highest hash rates. And here you're going to be able to see your efficiency here. So what it kind of settled in at was an 18.09 uh, joules per terahash. And you can kind of see this one uh, was a little bit better at 17.86, but the hash rate is a little bit lower. And so if we then if we scroll down and we look at the efficiency ones, you'll see... 1,000 millivolt, 450 megahertz. The hash rate was only 0.967 terahash, so slightly under one terahash a second, but it was only 16.9 joules per terahash. So extremely efficient. But these devices are already super efficient, super low powered. So for us, we're going to kind of stick with the highest hash rate one, which is this. But if you're more interested in kind of the... Uh, more of the efficiency side, especially if you're running a bunch of these. And then this is something that will definitely be of interest to you. You can take a look and you can see, so 0.967 was obviously the most efficient algo, or the most efficient settings, rather. And then um, second ranking was 1.056 terahash, uh, which was 1040 and 475. And then... Uh, you can see we've actually settled ourselves in at what was ranked at number four, which is 525 megahertz at 1040 millivolts. And that was giving us 1.1 terahash at 18.09 joules per terahash. So an uh, average uh, temp of 62 on the VR and an average temp on the chip also of around 62, 63 degrees. Um, and then you can see kind of the difference here. If we went with the most efficient, it was about 11 to 12 degrees cooler on the chip. So if you do have a, you know, less cooling implementation, you can certainly go for more of the efficiency, not have as much heat and, you know, not be consuming as much power. But if you're able to ramp it up a little bit, uh, you can definitely leverage this utility to identify those uh, kind of those things, you know, at a quick glance, I can see, uh, okay, you know, if I wanted to drop this down, so right now I'm sitting at 1.14 terahash. If I wanted to drop this down to 1.061, I would actually drop my temperature down by about five degrees, uh, which is pretty good. You know, drop four to five degrees on that. Um, if I was running into an issue where, you know, I was running cooling issues or, you know, I was borderline going into um, overheat protection, I could just simply drop that down. That's going to drop that thing by five degrees, knowing that these are kind of some good settings that I can work with. Obviously, if you have better cooling situation, you've got upgraded cooling on your bid uh, I am still running the original uh, fan on it. I haven't upgraded anything on it. But if you have upgrade cooling, this is going to be able to run those benchmarks a lot higher for you and give you kind of an indication of what's the best hash rate 
and what's the best efficiency that can be had with it. Uh, this is really becomes, you know, run it once and let it go, see what it benchmarks at, and will probably save a lot of users time on trying to, you know, fine tune their settings. So super happy with this utility. Again, if you want to run it, uh, Docker command will be in the description of the video below. Uh, I personally only have one BitX device, so I ran this on the Gamma. And overall, really happy with how it turned out. 